the last couple of days, I have been running into people who actually shared that they really need to learn how to love themselves and listen to themselves. And there seems to be an awareness. I mean, there has been for a long time, but somehow it's been coming to me. And I just thought I'd share a little bit about how you actually do that. It is a process. And of course, with everything, if we ever want to make a change, we need to be conscious first about what we are doing and how we are doing it. It, it really is a way to self-reflect and learn about yourself. And what we usually do, very common, is as soon as you make something you don't like about yourself, a behavior, a, a thinking way, an emotional expression, the first thing we do is to judge ourselves immediately and resist it. It's like, oh no, mm -hmm. push it down. That's how it works until, of course, we learn to change it around. So many years ago, I created a three-step formula and I call it still today the all formula a l l formula and that a l l it stands for allow listen and love so the first one that is learning to allow your experience whatever it is instead of resisting it. If you're not aware that you are resisting a lot of things about yourself, if not everything, you're not, you will not be able to create space for it and allow it instead. So what I want to suggest is in the next day or so, start really be curious about yourself. Start noticing when you go, oh, I don't, I don't want this. I don't like this. Or, oh, I don't want to think that thought. Or, oh, here's that bad feeling about myself. If you can first just notice that. And the practice is going to be to not resist it. Very, very hard in the beginning. The resistance, it's almost like the resistance comes with the willingness to see it, to become aware of it, because that's why it's down there. It, if you were not resisting your the qualities that you don't like about yourself, you would be aware of them in a very conscious way. And there is a reason that we want to make it conscious. And that is that unless something is conscious, there is no way you are ever going to be able to change it. So first, you may become aware of the things you don't like about yourself and notice how you are resisting it or judging yourself immediately. <clears throat> and by that, you might just cut off your process of exploring it and learning about yourself. So that's where the first step comes in of allowing I guess the first step is to, bec to become aware of it. So you become aware of your behavior. You become aware of how you don't like it about yourself and you're ashamed of it. You want to hide it. You want to push it away, fix it. That's all the ways that you are not allowing your experience to be the way it is in this moment. It's not allowing you to be who you are in that moment as an expression. So when you see it, I always invite my clients to just be curious about it instead of judging it and trying to get rid of it. See if you can find a curiosity inside in your heart. It's like, oh, oh. And just that little shift in moving from resisting to curiosity, there is like an O. Oh. And as soon as that is there, then you can choose to allow it 
to be experienced. You can allow your experience of whatever it is that you don't like. You can just go like, ooh, I don't like it, but let me take a breath and just like see if I can actually be present with it without resisting it. It's a very, very powerful and important step on the way. So even that, if you just do that next day for the next few days, just catching yourself whenever you're not being kind to yourself, when you're not allowing your experience to be experienced, just notice it. And then notice and practice if you can make space for it instead of suppressing it or judging it, contracting around it, pretending it's not there because it's there. You, you know, we know it's there because otherwise we wouldn't have this contraction in pushing it down. Right? And it may be unconscious, but it's there. Otherwise we, do, we wouldn't do this. So we just make it conscious and try it out. So then once you learn to allow it instead of resisting it, then you see, then, then that thing that you don't like, that you judge, whatever it is, it's right here. And now you can choose to listen, the L, A-L-L, -L, the first L. Now you can look, start listening, like, what, what is this? What is this part that is so judgmental, um, sad, jealous? You make a space for it through allowing, and then you want to learn about this part. Like, okay, so what is it here? What is that part that is, let's say, jealous? And just breathe into it. It's like you, you want to change your relationship with that part, and you can say hello to it. That's such a simple, sweet little thing to do instead of saying go away right like we normally do now we go like oh hello who are you what are you not with a judgment with a curiosity and you can probably feel that the energy totally changes when you do it that way it's like oh and then you can start feeling this part that's jealous and then it will start communicating to you in a way that you may not have been able to listen to before. So you, there might be a lot of sadness. There might be some memories that are in there. There might be a real deep lack of love for yourself where you tell yourself that you can't do what they do and then you're jealous instead and then you live in that duality and you don't want to feel jealous, so you press, suppress that. And you see, then you're creating this whole story inside that makes you very stressed and unhappy and contracted. So that's the second step, the listening. And of course, today I'm going over it rather quickly just to kind of give you an overview of what is possible. And it is simple, but it does take practice. So here you are. You're loving it. I mean, you're listening to it and you're open to it. And then we can start moving to the third step, the second L. Then you start loving it in, in the best way you can. Just the fact that you're not judging it or trying to get rid of it, that's already very loving compared to what it was before. But then you can maybe extend some love to this part that is so hard on yourself or that is afraid that you will not be able to do what these people do that you're jealous at right so you can you can embrace and hold that part of yourself and say oh yeah i see that's so painful you know to believe that and there might be a lot of tears because when you turn kindness and love towards yourself something starts melting. If you remember some of my other talks, I talk about, you know, the frozen wave or the frozen ice cube, you know, that sits there as a contraction. And when you bring some love to that 
whatever it is that you have been allowing and listening to, ah, finally somebody's listening without judgment. And it's you, it's yourself to, towards yourself. And then it can start melting. And that may mean that there's tears. That may mean that you want to go and talk to somebody. It can be anything. But you will know what it is because you are now choosing to listen and to be really loving towards that part. It's kind of like a little young child, you know, that needs love, that needs to be held. So that's a lot of the inner work. You know, we can talk about the inner child work. Uh, I don't use that term myself, but that's more common for a lot of people. It's just learning to extend kindness to yourself and to the parts that have been left behind, excluded, uh, locked out, resisted, judged. It's so painful when you do that, isn't it? And it's really not necessary. It's just a pattern that seems to have run rampant on planet Earth. And it's not necessary. It doesn't do anything for you. It will never ever get you to the end of the rainbow and experience what you really want. It, do, it, it is simply impossible. The only way you can start experiencing what you want and who you are is by bringing kindness and love and warmth to the parts that you have been resisting. That in itself is so powerful. And it's something we all need to learn. I had to learn it. It took me many years, but you know, I was taking steps and steps. And the way it is now, I cannot even imagine not being kind and loving to myself. It, it makes no sense to beat myself up or to shame myself. It, it's just not here because I've been practicing not doing that for so long. So that, that habit is just kind of it, it just dissolved, but you know, from lack of uh, nourishment and, and attention. Once you get to that place, of course, then it's just a learning to allow more of you to come out. And if it looks ugly at times, that's part of the journey. It's not because you are these parts. It's not because you're bad or wrong or should be shamed. It is simply because certain parts have been truncated back in your life. And they're sitting there and they need your love. It can be helpful to get it from somebody else too for a while. It can be very, very helpful just to learn to experience love if you have been you know, so contracted from the love. So it could be, you know, it could be a friend, could be your partner, could be a therapist, a coach, a teacher. It, it's somebody that you feel safe around, where it's safe to expose these things that you feel ashamed of in a place where you know that you will not be judged. You may still judge yourself, but if you surround yourself with an energy of somebody who is not judging you, who is actually welcoming and allowing that part and is curious about it. It's like modeling what you are going to learn to do with yourself. I think it's very important. I certainly had some wonderful teachers and therapists who helped me with the parts that I was, that I had a hard time with. And then I learned to do it myself. So if that resonates with you, I really hope you will uh, take some time and try it out. And I'm also going to put a link here in the, um, in the comments with, um, so you can uh, download a free tiny little meditation about the all formula. And so you can listen to it and, and kind of following the steps. They are going to be a little more elaborate than what we have done here today. And just to start practicing it. And you can also download uh, one of my books. I will put that in the link also. Um, so you can read about it and, and really become familiar with how to not resist yourself. And instead creating space for who you are, who you already are. It's just waiting for you to meet yourself there. All right. Thank you so much. 
Have a wonderful day.